a picture is worth a thousand words. This phrase aptly described the unique masterpieces created by renowned photographer Raghu Rai in his five decade long career. He has extensively photographed India, captured its colors, beauty, tragedy, the moments celebrated by India and those it laments. Raghurai's art is a thought, his creation, a depiction of an artist's view. He joins me today in Talking Point. Let us talk about the world of photography. How did your journey start? Accident. Accident is something so unique in life that it can ruin your world, it can make you come into a world which you've never realized before. So this is by chance that I went with a friend who was a photographer to his village and I told my brother, why don't you give me a camera? I'll also take pictures since I'm not doing anything. So I said, I'll also take some pictures. So the first picture that I took was of a baby donkey. That was in 1965. 1965, 66. And then I took some more pictures in the village where my friend was shooting. So when I came back, the film was processed and my brother saw it. He said, Are, this is a very good picture. I said, really? And you know, in, in 60s, uh, my brother used to send his photographs to the Times London. You know, they used to publish half page weekend pictures. So he sent this picture and they printed half page with my name on it in the Times London. So that was my beginning. <laughs> So I said, why not this, you know? And that is when you took to photography completely? Yes, yes. Because with one picture and everybody telling me, oh, this is amazing, you, what you've done. <laughs> you know, we did, I didn't know what was so amazing about it. Mm. But that, that was just by chance and instinctively I took a picture which was very special. Yeah, but you know, why a donkey? One would say there are situations, there are No, people. because you see the difference is, mm. This is the biggest computer God has been installing in each one of us. And this computer has great capacity. You can increase this memory to any size. And as they say, we use only very small percentage of it, you know. And so it can be increased to anything and it is capable of achieving anything in the world. But what is very bad with this computer in creativity that it, it is a storehouse of ideas, thoughts, images, sights, sounds. So when you take photographs, how do you take good pictures in the beginning? Because you, it's a, this storehouse has all the good images you've seen before. So you see something similar and you say, yes, this is a picture. But now, coming back to Baby Donkey's picture, I, I had no plan to become a photographer. So I had no responsibility, I had no liability to take a good picture. So my friend was taking pictures of the children, village children on one side. It was late evening and I was just watching because I didn't click anything. So then I turned around on the other side, I saw a baby donkey standing there. And I thought that was so cute and funny. Now that picture I took with the feeling, not with the idea. These two things are different. To have ideas, then you try to chase the idea, it becomes a second-rate journey. But if you have the feeling and you click simultaneously, this is another world. So it becomes your masterpiece in that case. It becomes yes. your original thought. Original. Yes, and the absolutely. originality remains. Yeah. But what is it that excites you the most? Is it the situation or uh, the subject? A man, a woman, a child, an object? What is it? Everything. But, you see, now I'll put it like this. Earlier, in early, early years of my life, I would go out with the idea, with the, if I'm working with a newspaper or a magazine, they'll say, well, Indira Gandhi is meeting opposition leaders or uh, Yamini Krishnamurti is performing here. So you go with the ideas because you have to feed your newspaper or magazine. But 
now that I'm a free bird and I photograph only for Raghurai and nobody else. <laughs> and so I make myself available to the situations, mentally, physically and spiritually. I connect. I connect with every inch of space to get the feeling, to get the nudge, hey man, this is something, take it. Mm -hmm. So this is, which means your instinct is at work. And instinctive response to daily life, to realities, to nature, always give you something personal, something extraordinary. And that is why freedom of mind is very important. Yes. You see, you have to shut off your mind. Okay. Shut off your mind because mind is a storehouse of ideas which have already happened. Right. So I would say freedom of soul is very important Absolutely. for you to be free spirited the and then free -spirited connect with who makes himself available and who connects. You have worked even on the news desk. What kind of addition has that experience uh, made in your career? No, you see, working for a newspaper or a magazine, the immediacy of things. To photograph right now in a fraction of a second was a great discipline that I have learned. That, you know, some events are happening or demonstration is happening, action is happening, sports is happening. You have to be quick enough to choose your moment. So that moment has allowed me and created a discipline in me that when I make myself available and go shooting for myself, then it comes in handy. You know, that the moment I get that instinctive feel from something, I click it. But you have covered uh, personalities extensively, the best of pictures, whether it's Mother Teresa's or it's uh, Indira, Indira Gandhi. Gandhi yeah. and even incidents like the Bhopal gas tragedy, nobody can uh, ever get over that picture of an unknown boy. What kind of an emotional connect do you feel with all of this? Dikhi as I have. Emotions are always at work and at stake. But no sentimentality. Because you as a disciplined photographer, writer or a painter, you have to deliver something. So if you become emotional and sentimental, then you lose the clarity and the mm, kind of uh, look into things which can penetrate and capture the power of it. Because emotions and sentimentality, so for a photographer to have a cool eye and a warm heart yeah. Just like a and the discipline. That's right. Do people really have the eye? For photography. Nobody is born with it. It's wrong to say that he's a genius, he was born with it. Some people start very early in their lives, so they start achieving things early in life. Not that they were born with it. I haven't seen a mother who produces geniuses. Genius has to be produced. Genius is born out of your own guts. The ability to invest, dedicate and explore makes you a genius. So it is every moment of it Darshan is what darshan? photography mein, seeing is dekhna. Mm -hmm. Dekhna is literally a physical thing. But कोई कोई होता है जिसको आप कहते हैं आपके दर्शन करके अच्छा लगा तो दर्शन क्या है experiencing a person or a situation in its entirety के साक्षात देख लिया क्या बात है You have a guru Raguji and the fact that it makes a lot of difference to uh, an individual's life if an individual has found a guru देखिए पहली बात तो ये कि हमारी जो संस्कृति है वो ये गुरुओं का देश है और ये भक्तों का देश तो है एंड वी हैव ऑल द गॉड्स लिविंग हियर माय गुरुजी हैड दैट स्पिरिचुअल पावर यू वॉक इन एंड इफ ही सेट्स हिज आईज ऑन यू एंड ही नो हु यू आर वेयर यू कमिंग फ्रॉम एंड व्हाट व्हाई हैव यू कम हियर और यू जस्ट कम टू गेट इन द स्पिरिचुअल मैजिक ऑफ दिस प्लेस सो ही विल टेल यू Oh, you are planning to go to such and such place? Don't do that. 
without you. And, and only he preached us two things. He says, don't ask me for anything when you come here. When you come here, just concentrate, meditate, and connect. Mm. When you connect with me, what you have inside you will come to me. Divine blessings you should not ignore. For me, divine blessings are very precious. Over the years, Raghurai has photographed India, documenting a changing canvas of the country. From important essays on Mother Teresa, the late Indira Gandhi, to the victims of Bhopal gas tragedy. His work reflects the intense complexities of India. What is the difference that one sees in contemporary photography and the photography which was done, let's say, 30, 40 years ago? Look, it's like that 30, 40 years ago, even today, people want to be called artists, not photographers. Mm. So they want to do arty things. And, and how do you do that? You almost literally copy painting style of doing things. The purpose of photography is to capture the time we live in. And when you capture it with sensitivity and responsibility, which means you are capturing a slice of life or an event which is here for just now and going to disappear. Mm. And that is going to be the photo history of tomorrow. History is written and can be rewritten, but photo history cannot be rewritten. So the purpose of photography, people are doing experimental, people are doing these days, because of the Western influence, they are doing uh, conceptual photography where you con have a concept, an idea, you create elements, you put them together, then you take a picture which yeah. looks like art. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh God. Are we too influenced by the Western style of photography? Nee, let me tell you, photography was born in the West and brought up in the West and almost came to India simultaneously. You know, when uh, you know, the East India Company brought two British photographers to document their empire, but they did it systematically and in a very, very uh, formal way also. But there was a kind of documentation which was very precious that, you know, Say, uh, photography started about 150 years ago in, from Calcutta. And uh, a great artist like maybe Gemini Roy wasn't, of course, wasn't that old. If he had done a street scene of Charangi Square 150 years ago, and a photographer has taken a picture of Charangi Square, when you look at the painting, you see a very nice painting. Hmm. But when you look at a photograph that was done 150 years ago, what is your response? You say, oh my God. That's the way we used to be. So, what is the vast, it's a huge difference right. in seeing a good painting of the same place and a photograph. You know, I have read it somewhere, shall you please sit? Hmm. Uh, I have read it somewhere that you were very fond of, uh, you know, you have compared the black and white photo photographs with colored photographs and you said that, uh, you know, the black and white ones, they carry a lot of seriousness yes. as compared to the <coughs> colored ones. Yes. Is that so? No, look, it's like this. Black and white photography is very interesting and important because we started with black and white, so you have more controls in black and white. But color photography, you see, a painter can paint a sky green hmm. and nobody will question him. That the sky is also green. Hote hai. But he's a painter, he has the, you know, he can take any liberties. But we, the photographers, if we capture the reality, and in reality there is a red, bright red and a yellow and a green or a purple in a given space, which is very sad and serious, suddenly they dig holes, you know. The colors don't blend together, then you can do nothing about it. Mm. But the moment you put a black and white filter on it, it silences the noise of the color because colors have emotional value, colors have physical presence, and colors, they speak for themselves, you know, by a lot. So, you know, every situation cannot blend and create that magic in color. Whereas in black and white, then it becomes, the, then, the, then you have to deal with the essence of the situation because there's no noise of color. Hmm. But I will not say that every situation has to be done in black and white or Every situation can be handled in color. It all depends on different situations. But uh, how about India? Because you have pictured India in its different faces. Yeah. 
changing faces i would say of indian mm. society is india the best place to shoot uh, you know situation india is the greatest society? place in the world you know mm -hmm. to photograph because lives are lived in the streets human interaction and so much more is flowing right in the streets look at the uh, ghats of varanasi i mean they are throbbing and uh, you take a turn in every street you know and it's a holy city of hindus and you take a turn and a god appears there some murti some god or something is always happening somewhere so you know the physicality of things is so strong in india which is not there elsewhere in the world and that's why so many photographers come to india but having said that also the fact that india is a very difficult place to photograph why because visually it's so different and exciting the physicality of things they it grabs you so much that you lose pen that penetration that you need to do hmm. and or meditation that you need to do in order to receive and perceive hmm physicality of things if you can please elaborate a bit physicality of things ki sab jo dekha rang biranga aisa aisa you say oh so much take a picture there's so much actually there's so, so much. much it's breathtaking for the westerners and for indians also but then jo bhi wo breathtaking hai uske andar spirit aur energy kya hai वो एक इंडियन फोटोग्राफर ज़्यादा अच्छे से समझ सकता है एज कम्पेयर टू द वेस्टर्न नहीं देखिए मैं आपको बताऊं कि ऐसा है मे बी एन इंडियन कैन बट नॉट नेसेसरीली लाइक प्राइमरीली आई वर्क ओनली इन माय ओन कंट्री बिकॉज आई फील आई वाज बोर्न एंड ब्रॉट अप हियर एंड आई हैव आई मीन एम्बाइब एंड एक्सपीरियंसड द होल स्पिरिट एंड द एनर्जी ऑफ यू नो दिस you know ancient culture so for me india is my whole world and i feel sometimes i can sniff around with my eyes closed and i can make out what's going on in in this country hmm. you see martin par is one of our very important photo color photographer once we were exhibiting together in australia so there was a discussion about this fact you know that ragu your work is very special and you only photograph in india is it an indian eye that you have so i asked him i said do you have a british eye i said the difference between you and me when i photograph india is maybe i i understand and i feel the nuances better than an outsider that's true so my work can sometimes have inner depth to things hmm. because i understand the nuances better you just arrived and taken some pictures similarly if i shoot in your country but again the difference in creativity the creative mind hopefully in most cases should come from an in instinct hmm. so instinct no matter where you shoot hmm. india abroad or mexico or holland you know if you are coming from your instinct you will capture the energy that requires to be shared hmm. and where do you think is the real india in villages as as many artists would say it's right? everywhere uh -huh. you can't ignore the cities and the metro cities and the developments even though they are uh, well the globalization has uh, sort of changed the physical identity of uh, these metro cities sometimes you have levi's jeans and you have uh, samsung somewhere written or nikon camera the best camera in the world huh? and you wonder you know whether you are in india or japan or europe or wherever so those in any case the changing scene even in daily life in metro cities or even in rural areas sometimes you see big hoardings in a beautiful paddy field where people are working with the hands mm. and a big hoarding of some you know whatever product you know but then you have to learn to make it as a part of the whole scene you know and capture the change because change is an eternal truth That's which true. nobody can stop That's true So but the fact is that India lives on so many levels and india is so ancient a culture where so many centuries learned to live side by side at the same time so this is the magical part of india hmm. that it lives so many centuries at the same time at one given place that's true but is there any favorite destination for you as a photographer in no. india no no nah, you see like i love to go to kanyakumari i love to go to mahabalipuram i love to go to himalayas 
but anywhere and everywhere hmm. where you open your heart and connect hmm. is magic magical yeah. what about your family uh, mr rai what kind of support have you really got from them well i'm married for the second time my present wife gurmeet rai is a great architect in conservation she is with unesco on the board of unesco she does conservation she's done con conservation plan for uh, red fort for alora for golden temple she is going all over the thing is that she is so dedicated and committed to conservation that unfortunately she is married a photographer if her husband was a billionaire uh -huh. she would have conserved and repaired all the monuments of this country <laughs> without get trying to get any funds from the government your uh, wife has helped you a lot in uh, building this center for photography no, as well no this is her building and mm. she's done it mm. the architecture is hers some of the like these arches and old doors i have been collecting from all over but then it was her creativity that whatever doors windows pillars and arches i collected she's included them in the in this design in such a way hmm. that it, it looks like it uh, is beautiful yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's marvelous it's a mix but, of a but the landscaping i have been doing for the last so many years yeah and it's green and, and I'll beautiful i'll say it's 6 acres of canvas which i keep painting uh-huh with plants and shrubs and mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh so what about uh, photographers the upcoming ones do you have something to say to them oh yes we have a center for photography I think you know when we were growing up we took so many years to go this path that path to experiment to find you know the right kind of journey and now that we know so much that it's very important for us to share it with young minds so that they are put on the right track from the beginning and similarly we've started a photography magazine called Creative Image mm. which is already the best magazine in Asia so the idea was that let's give the best to our young minds because today thanks to digital technology and cell phones that every phone has a camera that everybody is becoming every second person is becoming a photographer okay. so the idea is to feed them with freshness and power of image so that they don't become repetitive repetitive predictable uh, kind of uh, photographers making pretty pictures mm -hmm. because predictability and anything that is predictable and pretty is anti creativity hmm, so, so people take meaty meaty rang birangi pictures and they think yes this is it no this is not it art is something which takes you much beyond pretty things you know hmm and have you achieved uh, everything in your life or is there more uh, left to be achieved ha main abhi tak himalayas nahi jeeta hu main abhi tak pure aasman ko nahi niche leke aaya dharti pe अभी तक ये पेड़ अपनी मर्जी से उगते हैं मेरा कहना नहीं मानते आई वॉन्ट टू गेट इन टू दैम एंड मेक दैम ग्रो फास्ट दे डोंट डू इट दे डोंट लिसन टू मी वॉट टू डू ये सच बात है मेरी एंड आई मीन इट वेरी सीरियसली आर्ट इनेबल्स आर्स टू फाइंड आर सेल्स एंड लूज आर सेल्स एट द सेम टाइम सेड राइटर टॉमस मर्टन इन डीड इज द स्टोरी ऑफ एवरी आर्टिस्ट इट वॉज अ प्लेजर मीटिंग यू रघुराई